Hi there, it's Nicole from Lawn Fawn, and today I am using the String of Lights dies to create this holiday card. This is an incredible die set with lots of different sizes of Christmas lights. There are actually three sizes, small, medium, and large. I'm going to use the smallest because I wanted to put as many lights on my card as possible and I felt like the best way to do that for me was to use the small ones. I am going to die cut everything from smooth white cardstock for the light, bu light bulb part. What I actually should have done was die cut the two layers for the light bulb itself at the same time to save me some time, but I wasn't thinking. And so I ended up having to die cut those separately, but I am die cutting them all from white cardstock so that I can ink them myself with the ink colors that I want to use. So I can custom ink those for my card. Now there is a teeny tiny little part, the little um, top of the light bulb. There are two different styles. I'm gonna use the small little flat one without the little um, notch in it because I'm gonna hang them on my, quote unquote hang them, on my string of lights myself. But you could also string them through some actual twine if you use the other one or make ornaments from them or tags. So many ways to use these. I will be using these later on, um, probably that first week of December for my handmade holiday series. So I am inking the light bulb top part, the one with the little notch cut out so you can see the white underneath for the highlight with my Lawn Fawn dye inks. And what I love about dye inks is, is as they absorb into the paper, they smooth out. So where it may look a little blotchy, I promise it smooths out. Another great thing is these little dauber duos are perfect for adding ink because you can just pounce it on. They're small, great for small little pieces like this. I used the plastic flamingo ink for the pink light bulb, lobster for the red. Now I'm using carrot for my orange light bulb. Sunflower is going to be for the yellow one. Freshly cut grass will be for green. And then fish tank will be for the blue. So I'm just gonna keep pouncing on this ink. Very easy. You could also use ink blending tools or other foam uh, products if that's what you have. I kind of like these daubers, like I said, they're small. That little foam area is small, so it's really nice for control of where the ink's gonna go. Here's that freshly cut grass. Again, this one looks really blotchy, but in the finished card, it has dried and smoothed out. It's great. The red was definitely the most splotchy of all of them that I did. And in the end card, I was super happy with the results because at this point, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to keep the red light bulb because I didn't like how it looked. Here is the fish tank ink, which is a nice royal blue. I'm going to go ahead and put my light bulbs together. That means I am going to glue the colorful part on top of the white part and then go ahead and adhere the little silver at the top. And I am using some bling glue dots to do this. They are teeny tiny. They're great for small die cuts and no liquid mess, liquid glue mess. So there are all of my light bulbs. I have six total. And now I need to kind of figure out how I want to lay them out on my background. Oh, before I do that, I am gonna take the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen and just color all over the colorful part of the light bulbs, give them a little bit of glitz and glimmer. I love the Wink of Stella for this. And then set those aside to dry for just a second. My background, I'm gonna lay out my die and then I wanna lay out my light bulbs so that I know where I want to ink. And I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit because it did take me a minute to ink these up. Using the same daubers, I am going to apply ink to my background. This is gonna give that halo effect of the lights being on. 
Also, I promise that is not blood on my finger. That is lobster red ink. I accidentally got my finger into the ink pad. But instead of using that dabbing motion, I'm using more of the rubbing motion to make those circular shapes on my smooth white cardstock background. And I'm just kind of holding it in place because I don't want to secure anything to the card until I have all of my background inking done and then I will be stamping and embossing some greetings as well. So same colors of ink that I use to color in my light bulbs. I've used for my little halo effects. And what I ended up doing was once I got all the ink kind of in place and I knew where it was going to go, I'm going to move everything out of the way and I am going to really ink up the background with some nice halo effects. Make sure that that color is going to be out far enough that you're going to see it out around the light bulb. So just finish that up real quick. I did grab a little bit more blue because I didn't feel like it went on very good. And it looks really messy, right? It would look fine like this. I could definitely adhere these directly to the background, but I felt like it was a little too harsh. And my favorite tip is to take a piece of vellum, which I die cut with the large A2 sized dotted rectangle die from Lawn Fawn and lay that over. Plus I've die cut my string now from some Lawn Fawn black cardstock. But when you lay that out on top of the vellum, it gives you that soft halo look. I think this looks so much prettier than laying the light bulbs directly on that inked cardstock background. Now before I attach anything, anytime I want to do embossing, I like to do that before I attach anything. So any little extra embossing powder doesn't stick to adhesive or stick underneath die cuts or anything like that. So I've laid it out for placement purposes. I'm using a powder tool to kind of wipe where I'm going to stamp. That's going to help keep my embossing powder right on the stamped text instead of anywhere else. And then I am using a combination of greetings from the winter big scripty words and merry messages and stamping those right there on my background. And I'm gonna sprinkle on some silver embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. I'll tap that off and then heat set that. Now, if I had been thinking, I would have realized I wanted to stamp this cute little twinkling image from Merry Messages and I would have heat embossed all at once, but I didn't realize till after I stamped it, I thought this would be a nice addition to have just a few of these to help give that twinkling vibe to the background. So I'm going to stamp this image about three times. It's a trio. Sprinkle on the silver embossing powder again, and then I will heat set that as well. And it just adds to the whole look of the card. I am a big fan of when you're using vellum, use it to your advantage for layering. Um, not only do you want to see what's behind the vellum, but you want to have some fun elements on the front of the vellum as well. So here's what it's going to look like, and I am ready to start putting it all together. What I'm going to do first is ink or place some liquid glue adhesive on the back of the string. It is a delicate teeny tiny die cut. So you definitely either want to have die cut it with some kind of sticky adhesive, like stick it on the back, or you're going to want to use some liquid adhesive. I'm using a little bit of the EK Success two-way glue pin, adding little dots of glue on the back. I am sorry that was out of frame. I didn't realize I was so close to myself and not up higher little dots of glue all the way across, and then you wanna carefully place that. And then I'm gonna set something heavy on top of it and let it sit for just a couple minutes while that glue dries. Then I'll take some glue dots and go ahead and attach all of my light bulbs right on top of the vellum. So at this point, I have not attached the vellum to my background inked up panel yet. I want to get all my light bulbs in place because these are going to be a great place for me to hide adhesive to secure this to my background. 
I am going to put some nice strong adhesive on the back of each of those light bulbs on the back of the vellum. Then I'm going to put little dabs of glue behind anything else solid, including the embossing and also in the corners and along the edges, kind of hide it as best I can. Place that on the background and put something heavy on it to hold it down till the glue dries. Put that on a side fold card base, snip off the excess, and that is going to finish off my card design. Thanks for joining me today for this String of Lights card showcasing Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. The supplies I've used to create this card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more holiday cards showcasing Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.